Yeah, I think we're ready. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Burnett. I'm uh, giving the Airship Project update. Um, as I guess many of you know, this project was uh, announced in Vancouver, or yeah, six months ago in Vancouver, I guess. Longer? Six months. Yeah, yeah six wow. Months. Time flies. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's just uh, jump right in. Um, so Airship is a declarative um, infrastructure deployment and lifecycle management tool. Um, this is something that um, uh, lets operators, you know, uh, have a lot of confidence when they're testing updates and large or multiple site deployments, and be confident when they're rolling things out that they that they have <clears throat> tested a smaller version of the site with the exact same configuration and things like that. Um, that's one of the big advantages that you get from a declarative approach. Um, yeah, so we started this project um, in 2017, um, sort of on the back of OpenStack Helm, which uh, has has been you know really useful for us for updating OpenStack and stuff and stuff. Um, but we wanted a declarative platform for also managing the lifecycle of the whole cluster, not just the OpenStack portion of it. Um, so it was announced last May as a pilot project. And um, we've been in the OpenStack community since then, trying to improve things and iterate. Um, and grow and grow out the missing components that we have. So. Um, so the current state of Airship, where we are today, what exists is that it has a, a pretty good resiliency profile. Um, there are some areas that we know we want to improve, but um, it's designed not just for like single node down resiliency, but in particular, we want to build it in a direction where if you lose external connectivity for the site, that you can still do basic maintenance tasks on the site. Uh, everything is self-hosted on the site that's managing the life cycle. So you can do fixes even with limited connectivity, sometimes an issue. Um, we've made a number of security improvements over the last few months that are significant. Um, uh, we think it's got a reasonable, reasonably scalable operational profile. Although I'm sure there's improvement there. We haven't deployed very large sites with it yet. Um, but we definitely see the repeatable multi-site deploys. We do that day in, day out. We're redeploying test labs. Uh, updating them and so forth, um, predictable upgrades. Um, and so we have one deployment model for all of our software. This is one of the fundamental things that we do. Uh, almost everything in the platform is driven from uh, containers and Helm charts. So um, this is the trade-off we've chosen to make. You can imagine layered approaches and so forth, but this is the direction uh, that this project is sticking with uh, as sort of a fundamental choice at this time. That is, as much as we can, we're sticking to that model. So a single deployment tool for all software. Um, which means a lightweight host image at this time and then containers for everything, including like libvert and OpenStack Helm and so on. So pretty much all in on that approach, if that makes sense. Um, and we do now have a gated reference configuration in Airship Treasure Map, which is um, primarily a project filled with uh, re this reference configuration, but it also has some general project documentation, um, some CICD that's used to test out that configuration and so forth. It's really meant to be a sort of uh, second step starting point um, where you can say, okay, I get the basic idea. I wanna see a realistic example. We have a smaller example in Airship in a bottle that's like a single VM kind of deployment, very simple. Um, this is meant to be next steps. Okay, if I really wanna deploy this in a test lab, what do I look at? This is our, this is our best answer to that right now. So we have that, it's gated. Um, there's a nightly job that tries to automatically update the versions of all the components in it from master, uh, latest images, latest charts, including OpenStack Helm. Um, and so that's that's been going pretty well. Uh, additionally, uh, we have tagged a release for November. November 1st is our first uh, monthly, we hope to make it a monthly tagging process. Um, and that's that's what I would say is our like 1.0 release candidate, is that tagged version. So if you want something even a little bit more um, unchanging, <laughs> a little bit more stable possibly, that, that tag is sort of a release candidate, but you should be able to reasonably look at master um, because it has been through a, a, a full system test at that point. Um, any questions on the state of affairs or anything? Before? All right. um, you may have seen this uh, on one of the keynotes. We just have some nice quotes here from people uh, either using or experimenting with um, Airship. Um, I know, for example, Ericsson is starting to um, experiment with some VRAN applications on top of an Airship deployment. I, uh, you know, SKT has been doing been doing some work with Armada in particular, um, and there are other, you know, other 
other companies and organizations doing work here. So that's exciting. And one of the, one of the things about this too, uh, one of the things about this too is that um, you know, as a release candidate, you uh, oftentimes that means not production ready, and that's not the distinction yeah. that we draw. Um, it's more that a it's it's production ready, but it takes some uh, domain expertise uh, today to to get started with it. Uh, you know, in terms of um, learning how to um, how to navigate, manipulate the manifests that drive uh, that drive the definition of the site. Um, it just takes a little bit more um, a little bit more uh, domain knowledge and and uh, digging in than we would prefer for someone to get started. And that's a lot of the stuff that we're targeting for 1.0. Yeah, and I would say that those sorts of features are absolutely critical, and they're all sort of to the left of the site, right? The same sort of YAML configuration will end up being delivered to the site, drive the various components to do their work in the same declarative fashion. And really the issue is how do you write that big, massive YAML? I, if anybody came to the deckhand talk yesterday morning, I mean, I think we have, you know, 40,000 lines of YAML, basically. Um, that's not all site-specific. A lot of it gets reused, but that's a large ask, right, for configuration. There's a lot of configuration. Um, so yeah, um, so uh, to, to where we're going, um, some of the YAML, like site-specific stuff, is very easy to generate. A lot of it's just, okay, I know what the IP addresses for my site are gonna be, here you go, um, things like that. And then there's some non-trivial things like discovery, uh, a discovery approach for this, where the, the thinking is, and there's no spec for this, so if you have thoughts on this, uh, they're super welcome to like even just submit a spec or just talk in the mailing list or an IRC about it. Um, the thinking is that there will be a tool that goes and does discovery and generates documents that you would then commit. And the thinking there is that you wanna have your Git repo track your intended state. And then Deccan tracks it on the site side, what, what actual sets of config were delivered there. So you have the traceability on both ends. What's my history of intent and what is my history of actual delivered configuration and, and including annotations and so forth. So that's, that's the idea there. Um, but again, there's not a spec for discovery, and we'd really like to get that in. So uh, if, if people have thoughts and opinions, or yeah, it's super open. Um, uh, we're going to work on ironic integration. Um, we've been using Maz. Uh, Maz was sort of chosen, um, I think it's fair to say, it was chosen because it did all the sort of networking and storage configuration out of the box that we needed it to do. So we kind of grabbed it and started moving with it, if that makes sense. And it has proved to be quite awkward to operate in a containerized way. Um, and we, I mean, it's also a bit of a resource hog in our experience, but um, I think the main obstacle or hurdle that we've hit is that it's actually just not really built to work in containers very well. And so in particular, we would like to move to Ironic because we feel pretty strongly that it will operate better in a container environment. Um, so, so that's the idea. Remember, this whole platform is self-hosted, so inside the control plane, we're running Maz, or if in the future, Ironic, right? And so that's how we're provisioning new nodes if you add them to the cluster, or reprovision nodes if you need to redeploy it, and so forth. So it all has to work right there. So if you take down one of the control plane nodes, you want that Maz or provisioning workload to move properly, and that doesn't always happen. Um, so so that's, that's the main motivation there. there we, we hope there are some other benefits there, but that's, that's the primary driver from our point of view. Um, I already talked about auto discovery, ties right into YAML generation. We do have sort of a prototype tool, uh, what was it called, Tugboat? Mm -hmm. Tugboat, <laughs> which basically was written because we had, um, like many organizations I'm sure have like an Excel spreadsheet that defines here's what your site looks like. Uh, and the idea was to take that and turn it into something that is sort of an airship definition. Um, so we wanna do more generic tools in that, in that vain and but the, uh, yeah the, the next step there too is um uh, the, the plan is to uh, sort of formalize that that proof of concept um mm -hmm. as a uh, sort of a pluggable interface that then uh different operators can uh pull their site definition from different sources so that mm -hmm. if you have uh you know a an operator specific system of record that defines what your sites look like and what all the information for them would be. Uh, you could make a plugin uh, for this, this uh, to be created tool that we're calling yes. Spyglass that uh, mm -hmm. would, uh, would pull, the, um, pull your, your operator specific information in and turn it into the, the site definition. And then at that point, the proof of concept Excel based translator uh, would be adapted into um, a plugin uh, as well. And there's actually a draft spec up for this spyglass tool. 
Um, they, there's an airship specs repo that we consolidate all of our various specs in, so that's the place to go look for, for that. Um, I don't know the reference offhand, but 605227 for the curious. Um, it's gone through a couple of iterations, uh, and, but, and, and I'm sure more feedback is welcome. Um, another big item that we really want to get in is multi-OS support. Um, we've, had, uh, uh, we've, we've had a little bit of effort on this, on the image front in particular, but um, there's more work to be done here. There's a few assumptions here and there about how, how, how things are done um, that need to be generalized. There's definitely some assumptions in Promenade about Ubuntu right now. There's, uh, and maybe it's unfair to say that there are assumptions in the way we're using Maz, but certainly we need to be more general in the way we're using Maz at least. Um, but also the move to Ironic will, will help facilitate that as well. Um, but also Suzy support is, is, uh, is in the roadmap. Um, they've offered to help work on that. Um, so there's, there's work in a few components here. Um, it's, not, it's unfortunately not isolated to just installing the operating system. Uh, so there's a few bits of, of work to do there. Yeah, any questions about where we're going? Today, the only thing that's actually supported is Ubuntu 1604. Yeah, yeah, so far. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be relatively easier than um, also supporting Suzy and uh, CentOS and RHEL. Yeah, for sure. I'm sorry, the, the original question was be specific about what we're supporting, so that's Ubuntu 16.04, and then, and then I actually didn't quite hear all of the... If, um, it, is there a specific dependency or a specific, uh, I don't know, approach that's limited to Debian derivatives or... It, there's, there's some, you know, relatively, like, quick and dirty kinds of package installations that are literally just hard-coded to apt get, you know, install and stuff like that that need to be generalized. Um, but yeah, absolutely, it's on the roadmap to support more than just Debian-based, yeah. That's right. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so, so far we have a few integrations. I've mentioned OpenStack Helm a couple of times. Uh, we, we sort of make a, a mix of heavy use and heavy support for this, <laughs> for this project um, because we're running uh, OpenStack Helm on top of it. Um, but we also leverage like the Barbicon chart, the Keystone chart, you know, we leverage the Helm toolkit in some ways and, uh, and so on. Um, we're affiliated with the Acrano project, which um, is, I think there's only one sort of currently actively merged blueprint for the Acrano project. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Acrano is a, a project under the Linux Foundation that is looking to provide a, a sort of co set of codified references for various types of edge deployments. Um, and so Airship-based, OpenStack Helm-based deployment is the first blueprint in their toolbook or in their, in their, in their kit for that. Um, I expect they'll continue to refine these, and I know that they're working with Starling X closely as well as a major part of their, of their toolkit. Um, but yeah, so Acrano, um, we use Barbicon as a, specifically via Deckhand. Um, so that's where we do our, our secret storage, uh, sort of obviously. Um, we are making use of Oslo specifically for Oslo policy, but also I think a couple of other bits here and there. Um, and of course, we're using Keystone for Auth everywhere today. Um, we're actually working now to integrate uh, Keystone Auth via webhook into the Kubernetes API for our operators to use um, to control that access. Um, right now, we just don't give <laughs> them access, or uh, you know, higher tier support would get the admin key basically for Kubernetes, which isn't ideal. So um, that's the direction we're moving with Keystone. Otherwise, that's a fairly simple um, integration for us because it's just application level and also OpenStack level. So those are our main, I'd say, integrations. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so welcome to come get involved. Um, we have a project onboarding later today, um, just down the hall, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're on Airship It on Freenode, and we have weekly meetings that are currently at two o'clock in Airship It. Um, and there's a, is it is a weekly call and then it flips, the, there's a time that flips, there's a, like a phone call that one of our colleagues, Rodolfo, hosts. Um, but the time for that changes to, to accommodate um, collaborators in Asia and in Europe. 
and we're ba based in the U.S. So. The, the, is, do we have the link to the wiki up there? There's a link to the wiki. The, the wiki is probably the, yes. uh, the easiest place to go grab the times for these different meetings from. We keep that up to date. <clears throat> yes, that is correct. Um, and then there's a, there's a link here to Airship Treasure Map um, just for you to browse a, a complicated but realistic configuration set that includes like a full OpenStack deployment with Ceph. And I think it's what, eight, eight nodes or six node deployment? It's, it's at least six nodes. So it's four control plane nodes and then two or four computes, I forget what, on, on pretty realistic modern hardware that we test nightly. So, yeah. I'll leave the, this up for Q&A. So if anybody has any more questions, I know we had some throughout. Any questions? Uh, wonderful question. So the, the current situation, uh, or the past situation, basically, is that so the system, you, you, you deploy a Genesis node with minimal configuration, and then you run um, sort of our bootstrapping script on there called Genesis.sh. That, that creates a fully functional containerized single node control plane for Airship that you can then use to provision the rest of the system. Um, then the intent is that you will then use that same system to redeploy that node. MAS is one of the major limitations, or rather the way that we've been using MAS in a containerized fashion has not facilitated reprovisioning that node the way we had hoped. Um, I know that uh, one of our cores, Scott Hussey, has worked a lot on making that work and, and been working with Canonical to, to move to a different paradigm that should support it better. Um, I think he's very close on that work, but that is absolutely a blocker to truly reprovisioning that node. Um, aside from that blocking issue, which is either maybe been resolved in the last two weeks or will be resolved in hopefully the next month, somewhere in that timeline, um, there's probably a little bit of additional work that's not, not probably too scary. Um, and then there's already a documented plan for to make sure that we expose this host redeployment API all the way up through Shipyard. Um, but that work is very clear cut and not risky. It just needs to be finished basically. But it sort of hasn't been prioritized because it was blocked basically on this, uh, this MAS. It's like it's in the I'd say that's essential for the actual first release because it's, I mean, it's fundamental to the platform that you don't have this variance. And if, and if instead what you have is, well, the site is declared this way except for this, that's not ideal, right? Um, and eventually, in the, in the, I would say, medium to long term, we'd like to support a concept of a region controller that deploys that initial node via WAN booting or something and provisions it from the declaration so that you're in the beginning declaring that node in a meaningful way, not later on. So we don't, we don't have that piece yet. Um, but we have a clear cut, I think, clear cut path to this. And basically, if we can't get Maz to work for that, which we think we can, um, it's just more pressure on the ironic integration because it's a critical piece of functionality. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. So the ironic is the one that's already this target or post that on? The ironic, it's targeted for 1.0. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a there's a spec out for that already um, that uh, would be great to get a comment on, and uh, we also had a great discussion with the ironic team in a forum on mm -hmm. Tuesday where uh, we uh, talked through a lot of um, a lot of the details of uh, what ironic uh, integration uh, would entail. Um, there might be some uh, either some changes that um, might be needed uh, to add functionality or can, uh, assumptions to break assumptions uh, for how to, for example, reprovision nodes um, in Ironic um, that we're going to work with them on as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to get involved with that, um, anyone, um, it is a it is an area ripe for collaboration. I, I believe two, two of the major, major issues we got out of that forum with Ironic team was specific node targeting yeah. and also being able to treat Ironic instead of a, a bare metal service type thing. We want to talk to Ironic and control the bio settings dynamically every time we are reprovisioning the node in a different role or things like that. And normally these things are just hidden from the end user who are getting bare metal as a service. 
In case anyone didn't didn't hear that, or for the, the sake of the recording, the, the two things that um, we're going to be working with the ironic team uh, uh, toward making sure um, are sort of satisfied um, are uh, one the ability to uh, target specific nodes for provisioning or reprovisioning, rather than just treating the uh, the pool of infrastructure as a as a pool. Um, and uh, second is uh, oh. Brain fart. What was the, the but administrative functionality? Oh, the, the administrative like, functionality, like yeah, changing yeah. BIOS settings and so on. Yeah. yeah, and and probably that's something that we can integrate without being fully there because we could we can work around that by using Redfish or mm -hmm. something else in the in the short and medium term. So that's not going to be a blocker to integrating. You know, mm -hmm. so we'll we'll pursue the integration before that's fully baked. Yeah. Any other questions? I think we're out of time. Thank you all. Thank you.